Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we are going to solve an equation for z. z is a complex number. And remember, we talked about the meaning of i before or the definition in lecture videos as well as other problems. And I believe this is problem number three. We've done a problem on powers of i and then another problem that we simplified, uh, you know, put in simplest form. Anyway, so we have a, a complex number z, z plus 1 is multiplied by 3 plus i, and that gives us i. So I'll be presenting three methods, and the first method is called something that you should not be doing most of the time. Okay, this is how you do not solve this problem, okay? But I still want to show you. So z is a complex number, therefore I can just replace z with a plus bi, right? Can't I? a plus b i plus 1 multiplied by 3 plus i equals i. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute everything and get a nice equation. Well, it's not going to be that nice, but you'll see. Let's distribute the i, 3a plus a i, and then b i, 3 b i plus b i squared. Remember, that is negative b. And then we're going to distribute the 1 plus 3 plus i equals i. So we have this equation and we're going to go ahead and put together the real parts and the imaginary parts. So let's see. I have 3a minus b plus 3, 3a minus b plus 3, and then I have the ai and the 3bi, artificial intelligence, right? So I'm going to put those together and then that, that'll be the coefficient of i, which is actually the imaginary part. Awesome. So we got an equation kind of like polynomials. If two complex numbers are equal, then their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. I think we talked about this before, right? Hopefully. So from here, if you look at the i as, as 0 plus i, its real part is 0 because it's pure imaginary. It's just an imaginary number. So this is going to be 0 and this is going to be 1. Great. So we got a system. Let's go ahead and write it down. I'm going to put the negative th uh, 3 on the right hand side. And then this one, put the 1 on the right-hand side. Well, actually, that's not true because it's equal to 1, so that should be 0, right? So this part should be 0. Cool. Now, to solve this problem, we can eliminate. Uh, let's multiply the top equation by 3. And then that's going to give us, uh, let's do it here, 9a minus 3b equals negative 9. And then a plus 3b equals 0. And then if you add these up, you're going to get 10a is equal to negative 9. Okay, so what does that give you? That gives you a equals negative 9 tenths. And then by substitution, you can find b, obviously. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. Negative 9 tenths is equal to negative 3b. And then from here, negatives cancel out, and b becomes 3 tenths. And since we were looking for a plus bi, our number can be written as negative, 10, negative 9 over 10 plus 3 over 10 I, and that should be the answer. Okay? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Again, the first method is how you should not solve this problem, right? It's kind of painful. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method is basically using distributive property. Let's go ahead and distribute the everything. So 3z plus zi plus 3 plus i equals i. Great. Why? because i cancels out, leaving us with 0. That's kind of nice. And then we can take out a z here and write this as 3 plus i. And then that's a 3. So let's go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. And that's going to give us a negative 3. Awesome. This is pretty quick, right? Great. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3 plus i. And then remember the trick for division. You must get rid of the i at the bottom. In other words, we must multiply by the conjugate. But not just multiply, of course, the top and the bottom. We're going to multiply by 3 minus i. That's going to give us negative 9 plus 3i divided by... Now, at the bottom, you have something like a plus bi and a minus bi. And remember, this gives you sum of two squares, not difference of two squares. So this is going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10. So this becomes negative 9 plus 3i divided by 10. And then you can definitely separate this into negative 9 over 10 plus 3 over 10i. Let's go ahead and compare this 
to our first method to make sure that we got the exact same answer. And yay, we did. Isn't that awesome? We got the same answer. And we should, obviously, because it's the same problem, right? Cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And please let me know what you think about these different methods, which one is your favorite, which one you like the best. Okay? The third method is as follows. Let's go ahead and write the original equation. And we got this. Now, think about this. I mean, I distributed the z and I had to factor it again. So why not just keep it, keeping it uh, like as is, not distributed. And let's just divide both sides by 3 plus i. You're going to notice that it's actually a better approach. In my opinion, I could be wrong. That's personal opinion. So now we got this. So what am I going to do to solve for z? If you have z plus 1 equals something, what would you do normally, right? I mean, you would subtract 1 from both sides. Let's do it. Subtract 1 and then you'll get z. That's it, but let's make a common denominator, i minus 3 minus i, divide by 3 plus i, and that should give us, uh-oh, the i cancels out, and we end up with z equals negative 3 over 3 plus i, and again, we do need to, notice that we're getting the same thing, right? We do need to multiply by the conjugates, right? The conjugate, or the, just the conjugate, but we got to multiply both, and then from here we get the same thing, we should, right, negative 9 plus 3i, divided by 9 plus 1, again, 10. And z now can be written as negative 9 over 10 plus 3 over 10i. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.